Hi everyone, welcome back to another video about the solar configuration that I've installed at my home. We're based in Norfolk and that's on the southeast coast of the UK. We purchased this configuration just about a year ago, early January 2019. It's 14 panels, JA Solar 280 watt panels, and we use a Solus 3.6 kilowatt inverter. In September last year, we moved those panels and added a further eight 300 watt panels, bringing the system up to a total of 6.3 kilowatts. But now it's a year on the first array because they are individual arrays. I can look at the numbers, look at the cost savings, look at the cost and how much I spent and see how long it's gonna to take to get payback. Does solar really pay in the UK? And here's the first and most important number, 4,260 kilowatt hours generated in the first year. At the time we installed the panels, we were expecting to get 3,763 kilowatt hours in the year. So we've done quite well this year. So for the first financial figure, the income I get from the FIT scheme, the feed-in tariff, this includes generation and export, I get about 7 pence per kilowatt hour. That's £298.20 earned for the year, tax-free. The next number I'm going to look at is the amount of energy I've saved, the cost saving from using less energy in the house through having solar panels. Last year, 2018, I used 2,552 kilowatt hours of energy, but we uh, charged the electric car from September through December using 463 kilowatt hours. So if we deduct that off, that's 2,089. Compare that to my first year with solar panels and we're down to 1,536 kilowatt hours. Again, deduct off the electric car charging from the grid, that was 394 kilowatt hours, leaving 1,142. The difference, the amount I've saved, 947 kilowatt hours. At the rate I'm paying at the moment, 13 and a half pence per kilowatt hour, that's 127 pounds, 84 pence saved this year. The next saving to consider is hot water. I now heat my hot water instead of from the oil boiler from electricity using the immersion heater. And I use a My Energy Eddy device to do that. Initially, when we first got the solar array, I used to heat the hot water by turning the immersion on and off manually. So that's a three kilowatt immersion heater, either on or off, with a solar diverter like the Eddy device from My Energy. Then basically, it's using whatever's excess um, from your solar generation. So if you've only got 500 watts or a kilowatt, then that's how much energy is being used to heat your hot water, not the whole three kilowatts. Looking at the energy that the Eddy device has taken from my solar arrays, and used just for heating hot water, that's 337 kilowatt hours for the entire year from the beginning of September through to the end of December. That was 112 days that it was installed. So if we pro rata that out for the entire year, you come to about 1100 kilowatt hours to heat my hot water using that eddy device. But my savings are actually coming from oil. So I've had to measure the oil in the oil tank and work out approximately how much oil I think I'm saving by using solar and the eddy device instead. And I think that comes to about £130 of oil as at today's going rate for oil. And just to make sure that that figure is appropriate, if you multiply the 1100 kilowatt hours that I'm estimating I'm going to use for an entire year heating my hot water, times by the price of electricity at the moment, 13.5 pence for myself, that comes to 148 pounds. So that's pretty close. So I think my estimation is a fair estimation. And the final cost saving to take into account is the amount of solar energy that I'm putting into my Kona Electric via the My Energy Zappy charger that I have. Basically, just like the Eddy, it's diverting excess solar energy from the panels into my car. And that's saving me money from not using electricity from the grid. Over the entire year, I've put 1,455 kilowatt hours almost into the Kona Electric from solar and only 394 came from the grid. So that would have cost me £196.29 if I was charging from the grid at home. To me, though, it feels more like I'm actually saving about £1,000 a year on diesel because buying the solar panels, having an electric car, it's all part of the same solution. So really, I'm saving a considerable amount of money by having so much energy, so many miles covered by solar power instead of diesel. But for the purposes of this calculation, I'm going to use the equivalent of grid energy. So it's the lower number to make it look worst case. So in summary, I think I've got £752 worth of savings in the first year, but 
I've got to remember that I installed that second array in September. So from September through to December, I had an increased amount of kilowatt hours available, and therefore that has distorted these saving figures. The second array generated just over 400 kilowatt hours in those months, compared to the 4,260 for the entire year of the first array. That's about a 10% difference. So if I deduct 10% off some of those figures, that should make it even more accurate. So the big question now is how much did it cost? Well, I paid Eon, who installed it for me, four and a half thousand pounds for the 14 solar panels, the Solus inverter, all the electrical configuration to install it, and of course the scaffolding to be put up so they could actually put the panels on the roof in the first place. So 4,500 pounds, all included. Given the solar array should last 15 to 20 years, or more without any issues. I think uh, if it pays for itself in six years, you can see it's a really good investment. Of course, if you want to take an absolute worst case and say that, uh, well, what could have I done with that four and a half thousand pounds other than buy solar, then yes, if I'd have left it invested where it was, I was making 5% interest in dividends, which would alter the payback to be nine years and four months. Personally, I wouldn't bother doing that. I would say it's just over six years to pay back. The good news is a year further on, now 2020, you can probably get that same 4 kilowatt uh, solar system on your roof for about £4,000. Solar panels have become a little bit cheaper, so your cost argument might be even better. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll leave you with this image showing the month by month generation from that solar array. And yes, the 4.71 megawatt hours is different to the number that I've actually used in this calculation because I didn't install the monitoring software for nearly a month when it was first installed. That's why there's a difference. Anyway, thanks again for watching. See you all again soon. Bye bye for now.